Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the all new Xiaomi Redmi Note 9S or the Note 9 Pro. This is actually the same exact phone. Recently I posted a review on this phone and personally I really like it. It's powered by the Snapdragon 720G and it comes in at around 200 US dollars for the 4 gigabyte model, which I have here. And one of the main reasons I picked it up is because it's powered by that Snapdragon 720G and I really wanted to test this out with my favorite emulators like Dreamcast, PSP, Sega Saturn, N64, GameCube, 3DS, PS2, and a few others. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Now I do want to mention that the first half of this video with PSP, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, and N64, I used the built-in screen recorder. And there was absolutely no noticeable hit to performance using Dreamcast, PSP, N64, and Sega Saturn with that screen recorder going. But for the higher end stuff, I wanted to film the screen separately with another camera, just so I didn't have that running in the background and I could get the full performance out of this phone for the harder to emulate systems. Now for the first half of the video, I'm using this iPega 9167 controller. It's a telescopic controller and the phone fits right in here. Connects over Bluetooth. I don't like the look of it, but performance with this controller is great. I've done a full review on it. But when I set the phone down to be stationary so I could film the screen, I just use an Xbox One S controller. It connects over Bluetooth and works just fine. But before we jump right into it, I did want to go over the specs real quick. For the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 720G. This is an 8 nanometer processor, 2 big cores at 2.3 gigahertz, and 6 smaller cores at 1.8. The GPU is the Arduino 618, and you can get two variants of this. One with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, which we have here, and the other one has 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, but both of them offer a micro SD card slot. The screen is actually really nice on this. It does have a bit of glare when you're outdoors, but overall, it's a decent display for the price of the phone. We have a 6.67 inch IPS display at 1080 by 2400, and it's running Android 10 right out of the box with MIUI 11. So with all that out of the way, let's get into some emulation. Now on screen, I will have the FPS listed for every one of these emulators. I'm also gonna have the emulator name, if I'm upscaled, and the game name itself, right in the bottom left hand corner. So this is the Redream emulator and I was able to upscale to 1920 by 1440 and keep in mind I'm using the built-in screen recorder and that's using a little bit of CPU in the background. Not much, I mean it wasn't noticeable whatsoever when I was playing these games, but I think we could have went up a little bit with the resolution and these Dreamcast games. Overall, it works great on this device. Next up, we have some N64. I'm using the Moopin 64 Plus FZ emulator from the Google Play Store. I'm upscaled to 960 by 720. And again, with this, I probably could have went up, but it was working so well at 960 by 720, I didn't want to change anything. And it looks great. Down there, 
So here we have some Sega Saturn emulation, and I usually use RetroArch with this core here, but I'm using the standalone. I just wanted to switch it up a bit. This is Yoba Sanshiro, the standalone version from Google Play. And as you can see, it's running quite well. Now, this isn't my first choice for a Sega Saturn emulator on Android. I'd rather use RetroArch with the Beetle Core, but unfortunately, I was getting around 50 FPS with both of the games I tested. So I moved over to Yoba Sanshiro, and we're getting full speed here. Nice 60 FPS, everything looks great, and it works fine. Going into this one, I knew it was going to work fine. This is the Drastic Emulator, Nintendo DS. You can get it from the Google Play Store. I went full screen with it. You usually have two screens side by side, or you can set it up vertical if you want to. You'll have no trouble at all using the Drastic Emulator on this type of device. I've been able to run this on lower end prepaid phones at full speed. This is just a really good Nintendo DS emulator. Moving back up a bit, we have the PPSSPP emulator for PSP, Tekken 6, 3x resolution, no hacks, no frame skip, it just works on this device. I am using the Vulkan back in here, I also tested the OpenGL and both of them perform just fine. Now there's really only a few games that I need to test to make sure that the PSP emulator is going to run at full speed on a chip like this, and that's God of War, Chains of Olympus, or Ghost of Sparta, and Midnight Club Dub Edition. I did test both of those games, and they run at full speed, 3x, no hacks, no frame skip. So moving up to the really hard emulators, we have Citra MMJ for 3DS. Now this emulator's come a long way, but I wouldn't go out and purchase this device specifically for 3DS emulation. Yes, there are games that are going to run at full speed on this, but the Snapdragon 855 or 865 is something you really want to get the max out of this emulator, at least at the time of making this video. But I was still really surprised with the performance here and the Snapdragon 720G. It's definitely not the best that I've seen. I mean, I've tested this on the Snapdragon 855, the 855 Plus, and the 865, but knowing that this phone only costs $200 and seeing the performance here, it's really impressive. Like I mentioned, this emulator has come a long way, and hopefully the devs continue this pattern. Alright, so here's the Dolphin Emulator. I'm going to tell you right now that there are games you're going to be able to run at full speed. This is Soul Calibur 2. You see some dips every once in a while, but this is still very playable. But there's a lot of games that aren't going to run at full speed with the Snapdragon 720G, at least as of making this video. In the future, performance might increase because the devs do a lot of work with this emulator. But we just don't have that raw CPU power to push the harder to emulate games. As you can see, the lower end stuff works great. So Calibur 2, we have Super Smash. Even Wind Waker runs at full speed. But when we move up to the harder to emulate stuff, it kind of falls on its face. We just don't have the power to push those games. This is Super Mario Sunshine, the very beginning of the game. And usually this works pretty decently. And then when you move past this tutorial, it all falls on its face. But I can tell you right now, with OpenGL or Vulkan, this game is unplayable on the 720G right now. I still wanted to throw Auto Moto Lista at it. I was sure it wasn't going to run at full speed, and I was correct. We're in the 40s with this one. And finally, for this video, we have some PS2 emulation. 
Unfortunately, there's just not a good PS2 emulator out there. I'm waiting on the Play emulator to start being updated more and get some better performance on ARM chips, but we're kind of stuck using Daemon PS2 Pro. I'm not a big fan of it, and as you can see, it's not running great here with Tekken 5, but I was actually pretty impressed with God of War 2 performance. There's lots of hacks going on in the background. You can see some frame skipping going on, but it performed much better than I thought it would on this cheaper phone. So yeah, I think the Snapdragon 720G did pretty good with emulation given the price on a lot of these phones. I mean, if you can pick something like this up for $200 or even lower than $200, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. Of course, the Snapdragon 855 or 865 would be a better choice, but until we can get new phones with those chips in them for $200, I think this is an awesome option. Now, one phone that I've really been wanting to get my hands on is the K30 Pro. It actually has the Snapdragon 865G if you guys are interested in a review on that phone, or if you just want to see some emulation testing using that chip, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get my hands on one. But that's it for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.